I wanted to, to just share with you about this topic as we go in and the, signifi and the significance of it for me and I hope for you. I chose self-esteem and, and choice. Um, but I want to go in through it this way. For the last couple of years, I've been saying to close friends and to my spiritual director, and I've been with a spiritual director now for 18 years, two hours a week. He's a theologian and a Jungian analyst and a psychologist and a Catholic. And he was trained in Switzerland, but he left the pre right before he was going to be ordained by one week. He's a South Side Chicago boy. So he's got all the fixings for me. Um, and I've said to him for the last couple of years that I feel like the atmosphere is pregnant with something, and it's something, and it's going to burst. And through the months of my own dreams, and through the months of my own inner work, and through the months of my own refined sensitivities, I could feel the atmosphere getting thicker and thicker. Indications of it on the earth level were um, acts of madness increase, acts of things that compel where human beings say, I don't get, I don't get, acts of violence, acts of where we become, par our species becomes unrecognizable to us. Where we begin to question what I think of in our first collective chakra, the stability of our own nature. Our own nature. The nature of our nature, which aligns us to mother nature, which aligns us to human nature, to our humanity. These are all the same roots of the same tree. To earth changes, to ecological imbalances. This moment for me the time we are living in now, right now, what we are living through, is the most significant passage in the history of civilization. That's a mouthful of words. And I, some of you may have heard me say this before, but it is the biggest sentence I will ever utter in my life, ever the history of civilization. Now, the historian in me, the person who's read history compulsively since age nine, I know that there have been other times in world history where people have said there have never been times like this before. And at that time, the plague, the 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 hundred years war the the uh, depression the dust bowl the world war one the great war so many times people have said there's never been something like this human suffering has never peaked like this and at the time they were right dickens it was the best of times it was the worst of times when the agricultural age gave way to the industrial age. And this point I'm going to return to. And there was a crossover of one age becoming eclipsed and being rendered obsolete by the beginning of another era. The candle makers were rendered obsolete by the coming of electricity. And that's all there was to it. The agricultural age by the coming of industry. 
That was one way. We, we, are living through this extraordinary time when there isn't one thing you can list, not one, not one, that is not undergoing a profound transformation. Not one. From the shape of the nations on our planet to the reshaping of what species themselves will survive to the reshaping of the elements to the reshaping of the fundamentals of every single religion to the end of our position in our own mythology that we exist alone in this universe. We are about to enter the galactic community. The galactic. That alone reshapes us. Now that's just one part, just leave that. And then come over here. Up until the entering the nuclear age, we had a whole system of science that was based on this understanding that matter was reality. And that our five senses, uh, what we saw, what we tasted, was determined how the world was structured. And as soon as we entered the nuclear age, all of that, the science that had built the world we were standing on, everything you were taught, as a matter of fact, everything I was taught, because they didn't have a chance to redo all the science books. We were taught incorrectly because they didn't have a chance to redo the books that said, by the way, this isn't accurate. Energy comes before matter. We figured that out with the creation of nuclear energy, with the discovery of it. We figured out that the quantum world precedes, comes first, and influences the formation of the physical world. So if that's so, the same thing has to apply to your body. So actually, everything we know about health and everything we know about the form, everything we know about reality is, has been upside down. And so what we have to do now is turn everything you know upside down and inside out. Well, they didn't have a chance to do that by the time we went to school. So we were educated in the old, old way. And what's happening in front of our eyes is that the truth of energy before matter has penetrated and is taking over the order of the universe. Am I making sense to you? Mm -hmm. And it's sinking into medicine, it's sinking into health, it's restructuring, We've, we're creating technology that is all energy and what we're discovering through our own works in spirituality is that we have an internet that matches the internet, <laughs> that we are connected to each other, that we have a bio-spiritual technology, that in fact, we are in touch with each other, and that even though we can't, that the world we cannot see, cannot hear, cannot taste and cannot touch is infinitely more real than the world we can see. That it's in fact completely backwards, completely upside down. That the world we can see is the caboose on the train. And the world we cannot see is the engine. And that the journey of life is actually one of getting from your caboose to your engine. <laughs> and essentially, that's what it is. 
is that you have to figure out a way to drive your engine, to get to the place where your engine is actually real to you because your engine is driving you. And, and, and what I have no, noticed now <coughs> is that people want the engine to be real, but it's not. Giving up what we touch and what we taste and what we see, giving up that sense that this, this really is not as real as I thought is almost impossible, yes? And part of it is because we can't seem to understand what not real means. We don't mean it's not there. What it means is the value and the power and authority we give that thing we see. And its importance in our life is what we need to diminish. And this is where self-esteem comes in. It's a different kind of self-esteem than the kind that says, I think I can wear that bathing suit. <laughs> I'm not talking about that kind of self-esteem. I'm talking about the kind that we're going to talk about this weekend, which is the kind of self-esteem that says, I have what it takes to perceive differently than other people. I, I have what it takes. I can do that. I have what it takes to be able to see something m more accurately than um, other people. I have what it takes.